it's Dr. Ken here with you again. We're up to AC Practical 17.1 three phase power measurement. As always, don't forget to do your hazard identification, then the supervision level that will be required might be general or close supervision, the risk assessment class, high, low or medium, and then what control measures are you going to put in place to try and reduce the risk of the hazard that you've identified. So here's our first circuit. Circuit set up for three phase power measure, balanced load, one watt meter. So we have here a three phase supply, as you can see, and uh, we're going to measure the voltage across the line let's turn my pen on so we're going to stick a voltmeter in here and measure the voltage we're also going to uh, measure the current with our clip on m meter and we're going to use a watt meter now watt meter effectively has its own ammeter built into it here and its own voltmeter built into it here which do the power measurement for you and it also allows for the power factor. In our case we have a balanced resistive load so uh, we will won't have to worry about power factors and those kinds of things for this particular experiment. So let's get on with our actual what we've got wired up and here's what we've got. I'll just turn that screen pointer back on again. Here's our three phase supply and to take special note, there's a neutral here. So we've connected the neutral through to our meter. We've taken the voltage for the supply. Let's see the red phase. I've used the red phase as the current and the voltage into my voltmeter. So we're measuring there's the through the current component of the meter back and into one leg of our lamps. And then in measuring the voltage across one of the lamps here to one of the lamps across here to back to neutral. Our lamps themselves have been connected up in, uh, in star. So they just loop together. So they're 32 volts. 40 watt lamps. Now in this particular exercise we've got them connected in star so they're going to be more or less in series and we should get a line voltage, sorry phase voltage somewhere in the order of about 28 volts because our line voltage here should end up somewhere in the order of about 44 volts. We'll see when we turn it on. So we're measuring our voltage externally we're measuring our current here on the clip on ammeter externally, plus we have a watt meter also measuring. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare what we get on our voltmeter and our ammeter with what gets displayed on our watt meter. That's the purpose of the exercise. So here we've turned everything on. And you can see as if we get about 44 volts on the line, which we are, we're getting about 0.94 of an amp. So rather make it hard, hard for you guys to read it, you can see here we've got about 26.1 watts. I've summarized it in the table down below. So we've got a line voltage at about 44 volts, which means we've got a phase voltage at about 28, because we've simply divided this by root 3 to end up with our phase voltage and we've got 0.94 and we all know that power equals volts times amps and we're only looking for the power in one phase so we're only interested in the phase voltage and the phase current which is what we've got and if we multiply 28 by 0.94 we get 26.3 watts that's the calculated value, and if you look carefully on our watt meter, it's almost exactly the same. So our watt meter 
is measuring the power in a single phase. To get the total power, a couple of ways to do that. Our total power is our 26 watts. Multiplied by 3 means our total power consumption here is 78 watts. Because we have a balanced load, we can just take the power in one phase and multiply it by 3. So that works fine for a balanced load. But what if we have an unbalanced load? If we have an unbalanced load, we simply have to do the measurement three times. And we have to measure the power in A, then the power in B, and then the power in C, simply by moving our current selection and our voltage selection across each of the phases. So we end up working out what, or getting displayed on the ammeter, the the power, I guess right a P, power on A, power on B, and power on C, and total power, you just add those together. So the power total is simply to measure the three powers and then add them together. So our watt meter here is clearly demonstrated that it is actually measuring power, which is verified by the voltage from our line and our voltage for the current. And we worked out the phase voltage, multiplied it by the phase current, which is the same as the line current in a star connected system, which is what this is. And so we get 26.3 watts calculated and we measured 26.1. So our little experiment has verified what we would have anticipated. So that is what we would call a four wire, one watt meter method. Next, we're looking at the circuit setup for a three phase power measure, three wire, one watt meter method. So here we have to get a little bit tricky. Because there's no neutral, we've got to invent one. So let me show you how we do that. The way we invent a neutral is this volt meter reading here has an internal resistance. In my case, it was about 2.2K. So if this is 2K2 internally, all I did was put two resistors together. I created a pseudo star point. So this voltage now has a volts phase to measure. And of course, we've got I line being measured here. We've still got our 44 odd volts applied across the winding. And of course our phase voltage will be the same as the line voltage. Of course this time because we have our lamps connected in delta so they're effectively connected in a parallel arrangement they should be very, very bright. So this should be much brighter. If I can write bright there. Because remember, these are 32 volts, and we're about to put 44 volts across them. So they're going to be above 40 watts of energy. We won't leave them on for a long period of time. They would eventually uh, blow the lamp. But for a short period of time, a small amount of overload won't worry it. So let's move on to how we've got this connected up. And here's our connection method. And you can see the lamps are very much brighter. Here's the, uh, the line voltage. You can see here the line current. You notice the current has increased substantially because you'll notice we've now got a delta connection in here between our lamps. So our current's now at 2.38, our voltage is still 44, but you'll notice our watt meter is now reading about 61 and a half watts. Also over the left, you can just see just here on the corner of the screen, there's my two resistors that are producing the pseudo neutral, and there's the neutral wire coming out from my meter and making contact at the pseudo neutral, and you can see the other two black wires looping off here 
and here to make our pseudo neutral. You'll notice I'm not using the neutral at the supply. There's no wire connected here whatsoever. So I've simply produced a pseudo neutral using a couple of resistors and the internal resistance of the voltmeter that's inside my watt meter. So this part here, this is my ammeter inside my watt meter and this part in here is my voltmeter inside my watt meter. So that's why we're able to measure the wattage, the power. Again, our voltage line and our current line are pretty clear. So let's summarize all the stuff we have here. So let's, here it is summarized. So we know our line voltage is um, 44 volts, but we've produced a star neutral or a pseudo neutral. So our voltage, as far as our voltmeter is concerned here, it's actually measuring a phase voltage. We've got the current at 2.38 amps, you can see here. And if you multiply 28 by 3.28, you'll get 66 watts. So we have 66 watts per phase. And the display is displaying 61.5. I've just rounded that up to 62. So again, our readings confirm that the watt meter is actually giving us the right value. So again, the total power in this particular case will be our 66 times 3 at 198 watts. And you can see very much brighter lamps here. You can see these lamps are um, being well overdriven. So 198 watts. And we can do that because it's balanced load. So we can simply take the total power is equal to the reading multiplied by 3. But if it wasn't, then we would have to move our current reading round into each phase. And we'd have to take a current reading or put our current element into each of the phases and get a reading for A, get a reading for B, a reading for C, and then add the three of them up. And that would give us total power. So there you have it. To summarize, four wire only requires one watt meter and must include a neutral. And power is the power reading multiplied by three for a balanced load. If it's unbalanced, you've got to measure it in each of the three faces and add them up. For a four wire, it requires only one watt meter. Sorry, for a three wire, only requires one watt meter, but a star neutral is produced with an auxiliary resistors. So the power reading times three for a balanced load. If it's unbalanced, you've got to measure each of the phases again and add them up. So there we go. There's the one watt meter method for three wire and four wire systems.